Welcome to the Prime Strength YouTube channel. As always, Brendan T, to owner and head coach here at Prime Strength. And guys, we got another training vlog for you. So October 2nd, I will be competing in a powerlifting meet. I'm filming all my workouts into that meet. This is uh, week number two on the program. So we are about 11 weeks out. You guys saw this workout last week. This is my upper hypertrophy day. On Saturdays, I have my heavy SBD day. And then on Sundays, I take a day off. And then on Monday, I come in and do some really high volume upper body work, starting with the Larson Press, which you're seeing here. Today's video, I wanna talk about the need for moving your scapula freely in both the Larson Press and Incline Bench. We're also gonna talk about progression from week to week, what are optimal amounts, uh, especially when it comes to different types of exercises and rep ranges. So like, what should you expect to increase your load from week to week? Uh, I left this clip in here real quick because my bench was feeling extremely crooked. I wasn't sure if it, the bench was slanted, the combo rack was slanted, or if it had something to do with using the metal plates, which I usually use kilos because these metals are always weighed out really poorly. But I decided to move to a different rack and that solved the problem. So I think that combo rack's just kind of on a slant over there. But warming up this Larson press, what I want you to notice is how I protract my scapula on the way up. So I do not actually stay extremely retracted like I do on a comp bench. And even my comp bench to an extent, I would say a lot of longer arm people are gonna do better having a freely moving scapula rather than one that's completely pinned back the whole time. Uh, doing a little bit of movement prep here for getting my scapula activated. Uh, you guys can try this drill, it's really simple. Uh, although it's really hard, this tiny little mini band is harder than you might think. Um, but anyway, the point being is that your scapula is actually meant to move and using your serratus interior, your pec minor and some of these other muscles that fire through protraction of the scapula can actually aid you in strength. Now, the problem with this is in a heavy competition style bench, um, it can actually cause some instability and there's, there's a limit to how much you want to do this. Now, contrary to what people will tell you, this is healthy for your shoulders. To train your shoulders through scapular protraction, guess what guys, it's a function of the body. It is actually healthy. So um, this is something you're gonna see me do with more and more intent as the exercise becomes less specific to heavy uh, barbell competition style bench press. So when it's a Larson press, I do it a little bit and you'll see later on my uh, incline bench, I actually protract quite a bit. Now, last week I hit 265 pounds for a set of nine on Larson Press. This week I'm going up a whole 10 pounds, um, so this is 275, and I'm gonna blow this set up of nine here for, uh, with 275 pounds. So this is a 10 pound increase, and it's about a five pound total, or excuse me, a five percentage change from week one to week two, which is quite a bit. Um, but not only that, this set was a lot easier than uh, last week. So whenever you're getting into rep ranges that are gonna be sets of eight or higher, really work capacity dominant, energy dominant, where you're using a ton of aerobic activity, and yes, lifting does require a ton of aerobic energy. If you actually look at the studies on it, anything over about five reps becomes almost dominant towards aerobic capacity when it comes to the energy systems used. But the point here being, oh, in this side view, by the way, you can really see that scapula protraction, retraction. So I still retract on the way down, it's active, but on the way up, I protract slightly. Um, but point being that you can expect a very large increase from week to week when it comes to the work capacity dominant work. So this week, I was just way stronger on basically everything except for overhead press, which fucking go figure. My overhead press always sucks. But you'll see that my loads that I increased from week one to week two were pretty substantial. So on Larson Press, I had a 10 pound increase, which is about a 5% change uh, in load from uh, week one to week two. Now on this incline bench, um, I did 185 week one, but it was literally RP 10. This week I'm doing it uh, for the same reps, 12 reps paused here, and it became probably close to RP six or seven. I got all my sets in here at 185. As for last week, I had to back down to 135 pounds. But again, notice that scapula protraction there. That, that was why I was smiling. I knew that set was easy as fuck, and I knew it was gonna be a good day. So I was able to increase, or excuse me, keep the weight the same from one week to the next, but because I had overshot so badly week one, I wanted to make sure this week was very clean. 
As always, I'm doing a bunch of supersets too. So with the incline bench, I superset pull-ups. And so you'll see here, I was able to do my next sets. I did three total sets on incline here with 185 pounds, all pause for 12 reps. As where the first week, uh, I had it back down to 135 pounds and even that was about as hard. Now notice the scapula. You see how I protract it really hard? Now one, this goes really well with pec contraction. So if you guys are doing more bodybuilding dominant exercises, look how my pecs can reach end range contraction there. They're gonna get a lot more work than if you keep your scapula pinned back, your pecs will not reach full end range contraction. So there's that benefit, but it also adds a lot of power to your lockout. It's just knowing when and how to use this. So I scale it basically with specificity. The more specific the exercise, the more I keep the scapula locked in. So as I get towards incline bench, I'm protracting actually quite a bit compared to say my competition style bench. Larson press is kind of in the middle. Dumbbell bench, for instance, is also in the middle. Um, but anyway, I regress. So moving on to overhead press. Um, so, so Larson press went amazing, overhead press went amazing. I figured, or excuse me, incline bench went amazing. I figured overhead press would go amazing. It did not. I hit 145 pounds here for a set of eight. It was at RPE and I could have got 10 reps, but I knew I was going to overshoot and it was more important to me to not overshoot. So I decided to rack it there and then I went and did some rows superset with it. Now to progress these rows, I decided to use the same load, but increase the time under tension, which is actually not a huge variable when it comes to uh, tracking hypertrophy over time. I don't really worry about time under tension. I worry about function and loading that function over time. However, uh, it is a way to, to kind of build in progression into your training. So it's like if one week to the next, you don't really want to increase load, you could increase your control of a range of motion with the same load, which is going to increase energy demand and actually progress the exercise without having to add load to the bar. So that is one way of doing it. And that's what I opted for here on these rows. And I do that a lot for my um, exercises that are very deep into the workout. So if I'm like four or five, six exercises into my workout, the chances of increasing load a ton week by week is going to diminish because you're in such a deficit of energy already from the start of your workout. Now went back to overhead press, dropped down to 135, thought this would be enough of a decrease, but I still had to cut those to sets of eight. Just being transparent with you guys, I fuck up too, so <laughs> definitely overshoot an overhead press. But here's the thing, I should have taken a smaller progression. So I did 135 week one, and week two I should have opted for 140 for my sets. Th that small bump, instead of going all the way up to 145, would actually allow me to get the rep range and the RP that was required for the day, and had I continued with just a small five pound increase from week to week, I would by the end of this training block have reached 150 pounds on the overhead press in theory. And from that, I would see about a 12% increase of load over the training block over four weeks, which is actually huge for a tertiary uh, pressing exercise, meaning like, I'm three pressing exercises deep into this workout and I'm also doing some you know, other exercises too. And in that state, it's very hard to progress load on those exercises. So I wanted to kind of touch on this topic to, to tell you guys that not every exercise in your workout day needs to see progressive loading from week to week um, because you're, you're going to reach a point where if you've increased the first two, three or four exercises on load, it's going to be hard to increase the later exercises on load as well. And I should have opted for a smaller progression there. So just kind of pointing that out, um, wanted to talk about a few topics like that today, finished up with some face pulls here with external rotation. This is one of my favorite, uh, shoulder health exercises, as well as building up those rear delts and mid delts and, and traps and, um, back. So if you guys like the video, like comment, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next training block.